The data tab of the ribbon offers a few handy tools for basic data manipulation tasks. Due to legacy reasons, there are also many less frequently needed functionalities. For example, the query tool known as Excel Power Query has replaced many old functionalities such as these external data source buttons. But this lecture is about simple data tools, so let's get started. We want to split this data to individual columns by a separator character, remove duplicate rows and add a column that has a drop-down list in each cell. In order to split data to individual columns, you must select the column and choose Text to Columns. A wizard will appear to the screen. Our data is separated by commas, so click the Delimited option. The Fixed Width option would be suitable if each field would be defined by the number of characters instead. Select comma as the delimiter. In this case, the text qualifier has big impact about how fields are split. If we select a text qualifier like this, any commas inside double quotes will be ignored. At the step 3, you could skip columns or set data types for each field. But now we are happy with the defaults. Click Finish. As you can see, data got split to columns at each comma that wasn't inside the double quotes. Next, select the whole data range and click Remove Duplicates. From the pop-up window, you can select the fields that define duplicate rows. By selecting only the fruit field as a condition, only the first instance of Apple will remain in the data. I click OK and we see the results. Then I press Ctrl C to undo changes for another attempt. This time I select fruit and color as criteria. Green apple is the only duplicate combination of color and fruit, which means that only this row will be removed. When I click OK, I can see that only the second instance of green apple has been removed. Finally, we apply data validation to create drop-down menu. For this example, I create new column, sold. I want to set this column to either yes or no for each row. To create the drop-down, I select the area, click data validation, and from the allow, I choose List. As the source, I set custom values Yes and No. The delimiter is the same that you use to separate parameters in formulas. You are still able to type values by hand if they are inside the allowed range. I copy and paste Yes to all of these cells and then change some values to no. If I try to change a value to maybe, I will get an error. From the data validation form, you can customize multiple settings. Change the allowed input range. Choose how to treat empty cells. Set an instruction text. And modify the error message. This was a brief introduction to most important tools in the data tab. In the lecture about the Power Query tool, you will learn much more advanced skills.